Hey guys, my name is Sanjay and welcome to the Engineer Wannabe YouTube channel. Today we are going to be reviewing and unboxing. Unboxing because there is something special here. <laughs> I mean, this is this is different. Um, the Chapek Antarctic Passage de Drick. I am very honored to be able to take a look at this. Uh, I know you guys have heard this a couple of times in the past few uh, months. This is uh, not my watch. It is borrowed in uh, from you know, my my good friend Marcus lent it in, and I'm really grateful to be able to take a look at this uh, before we get into the box and the watch itself. I just want to share my wristwatch check. That's the Longines Legend Diver in 36. My wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference, six and a quarter inch roundabouts. Um, yeah great watch uh, okay so uh, the other thing is I want you to know that you are infinitely valuable um, that you uh, that a great price has been paid for you and I hope you know that and uh, you are precious and you're worth it and um, I, I mean that I, I know it's something I say a lot uh, but it is it is true so uh, if you want to know anything about that there's a link in the description let's get into the unboxing here uh, this is the outer, not the outer outer case, but the outer case. There's an there's a further outer case, uh, which I didn't put in here because I was kind of running out of space. But so this uh, little flap opens up, and this looks deceiving. It looks like a single box, but actually there's pieces going on here. So let's get this guy out of here, which is a little tricky. <laughs> okay. So there is the outer box. We dealt with the outer box. Okay, uh, and here is an inner, inner, inner box. This houses the watch. I'm not sure what's going on here. I feel like there was this um, conical flask type thing was glued into the back of this box here, but um, they delaminated or the paint came apart or something. But not a big deal. Um, the watch is in here. We'll take a look at that in a bit. Uh, and this weird contraption, this piece of wood here, opens up. And all the documentation, all the documentation, knickknacks and tools are in here. So the Passage de Drake Antarctique Salmon Dial. Um, I think the other ones come with rubber straps as well. Um, with a quick, quick fit fitment system um quick release system that's what i was trying to say and the deployments in here for the rubber strap very cool very cool implementation i think and got some uh, screwdrivers here so i think this is for the yeah this is for that quick release system um i believe you can use your fingernail too but having a screwdriver is pretty nice and uh just the flathead screwdriver here which is very nice as well you got documentation here Chopic Antarctique oh, look at that that's a cool seal oh Chopic Pass oh, so cool okay so that's the um, the inner inner box now for the inner 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 box I don't know what I'm saying but <laughs> there is the watch so this Smooth segue into the the review now, but this is uh, the Tropic Antarctique Passage de Drake Salmon Dial. It is a limited edition of 99 pieces. I think it's 99 pieces per color. This is the Salmon Dial variant. So at first I was a little confused about the whole Salmon Dial thing because this to me didn't really look like a Salmon Dial. I, I was thinking, well, that kind of looks like a uh, a faded orange dial but then i thought hey you know salmon sushi that that kind of looks like salmon sushi or even salmon filet it does look like cooked salmon <laughs> or prepared to eat salmon when when i think of salmon dials i think of like pinkish dials reddish pinkish dials because that's uh what salmon's like live salmon looks like now i think this should be called the salmon sushi dial <laughs> but a salmon dial does work and i do love this color not i am kind of fond of salmon dials uh traditional salmon dials pinkish uh pinkish reddish salmon dials but this 
I think this is really special. This orangish salmon is so nice. And they call this, um, uh, this pattern on this dial the Stairway to Eternity, I believe. I don't quite understand why. It doesn't really look like any stairs or anything like that. Let's get a bit closer. But it is incredibly well defined. Um, it it is it is really really beautiful, very crisp. And when you take a look at this watch, the 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 word that comes into my mind is just crisp. Everything is so impossibly detailed, and and the tolerances are so high. It seems like uh, can can I take your um, your attention to the chapter ring here? So if you take a look at this chapter ring, uh, they're they're actually all they're not applied uh, obviously, but this is a stamped chapter ring. Um, it would be incredibly, incredibly impressive if that was all applied. But um, they're they're all very well defined. Every single um, minute mark is is significantly raised up, and it it looks so good. You got that uh, index at or the triangle at the twelve o'clock uh, index. That's uh, in in red and it is really well defined as well. It's so sharp, so incredibly crisp. And uh, the fact that the crystal is very well AR coded, incredibly well AR coded, uh, makes that crispness translate really well to the, to the naked eye. Um, and you really should loop this watch if, uh, if you own it or if you're considering it. This is a watch that deserves uh, being looped because this uh, this pattern is just impossibly perfect. It's so nice. Uh, you'll you'll notice that the the date wheel is actually color matched to the dial, and it's done so again perfectly. Um, I'm I'm really impressed with that. The Chapek logo is I I'm I want to say it's applied. It's definitely not printed on. Uh, so maybe it's a very thin applied sheet of um, of metal. But I think that solves the problem of having a hideous landing pad, I think some people have called it, where there's a flat surface and the texture is all gone. Um, even the Royal Oak has that. Um, Audemars Piguet, you've got a flat section where the uh, tapisserie dial is just flat and, and the logo is printed on. I think that's really, uh, really cheapens the look, even though it's a ridiculously priced watch. Um, and in my humble opinion, this is this is just the right way to do it. You can get a really thin sheet of, of metal, stamp out the logo, and, and apply it on, you know? Um, and it, it looks perfect. It's easy to read. You know it's a Chopek. And uh, just a very, very well thought out watch. Um, uh, I, I would like to... I would like to talk a bit about the indices. I, I haven't got to the dimensions yet, which is uh, which is funny. But I, let, let me let me just talk about the indices a bit. Can you can you look at these uh, these indices here? They're faceted in in many different angles. Um, almost getting Grand Seiko uh, Grand Seiko vibes here, but it's not because Grand Seiko's indices are jewel like. And uh, the faceting makes it look like a, a jewel, but here the faceting is more complex. I want to say um, there is many different sides of faceting, and it makes it very reflective. You do get that low light reflectivity. If there's a light source in the room, you're going to be able to tell the time um, to a very good degree without the loom. This is loomed, but without the loom, you should be able to pretty quickly tell the time because of how faceted those indices are. Um, the hands, of course, don't have that faceting, uh, which is not disappointing, but it was kind of a missed opportunity if it had like multi-level faceting. I think uh, you would have been able to tell the time even, even quicker, but the hands do uh, reflect light really well as well, so you should be able to tell the time pretty well. The um, the counterbalance in the seconds hand, the the running seconds is uh, is really long. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, I don't think I like that. I wish it was a bit more subtle. The counterbalance, at least. But the rest of the watch, uh, rest of the the hands, every everything I think is is done really well. It's done perfectly. Um, I I love the the twelve o'clock 
index i love the font <laughs> uh I, I didn't know what to think at first but it's uh, like this elongated font and i think it suits this watch very well um let's finally get to those dimensions this watch it has been sized to uh, my friend marcus's wrist which is six and a quarter inches um maybe a six and a third uh, a little bigger than mine but uh, this has been sized to his wrist and it it weighs 128 grams so not too heavy but it feels very dense uh, everything is packed into this very very thin um, 11 millimeters very thin uh, the lug to lug is uh, is a bit complicated you can see here uh, the lug to lug is not uh, accommodating but uh, yeah so the the first link does not articulate at all um, it is very very minimal articulation I shouldn't say at all but very minimal articulation so it does extend out but the good news is that it is already fl uh, flaring downwards like the uh, the case profile is already going pretty sharp um, the the lugs are going down pretty sharp and so this first link follows that so it does tend to hide uh, the very very long effective lug to lug which is 50 53 little under 53 so 53 millimeter effective lug to lug if you put it on the strap the actual lug to lug will be uh these are plastic calipers so it won't be scratching marcus's watch uh this is a bit hard okay let me try it this way mm, yeah okay <laughs> it's just just doesn't articulate that that first link doesn't articulate so you it's quite difficult to get it okay let's see 44 so that first link doesn't articulate but if you take it off that that bracelet put it on a strap the effective lug to lug or sorry the actual lug to lug is 44 millimeters so uh, not not ideal for a smaller wrist, but not bad considering how sharp that uh, that angle is. You can see uh, the case is uh, got some character to it. Very interesting, kind of sharp angles here uh, in this uh, this cutout section. You can it kind of catches the finger, but you, that's never really going to be touching your wrist in any way. And you've got the crown guards that are built into that cutout section here, protecting the crown. Uh, very nice, very nice crown as well. Bead blasted on the in inside, uh, relief polished um, with the Chopic logo, 1845. It's a screw down crown, and the winding action isn't isn't bad at all. It doesn't feel like a. There, you, you you do get some feedback, a significant amount of feedback when you're winding this watch. Um, let's take a look at that movement which is one of the stars of the show uh, let's see okay so the uh, this is the sx h05 you got a uh, recycled platinum micro rotor in there it's unidirectionally winding so you're gonna get that that rotor spinning action there <laughs> i don't know if you'd like that it's incredibly dense and uh, and very very effective in uh, um, winding the watch. I, I, I didn't find that this watch wound down overnight. I'd, I'd wear this uh, in the evenings and it uh, pretty much stayed wound up. So uh, basically a couple of specs about the movement. It is 28.8 vibrations per hour. I uh, got, got 28 joules. The decoration is... Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, so you've you got these uh, blasted sections. It's gray. I'm not sure what the material is, if it's uh, PVD coated or some kind of ion plating, or if it's just the, the texture itself that's causing that gray sheen on this movement. But uh, it, it does have a darker look, a very, very nice industrial look. It, it looks very um, brutish. It's not, uh, it doesn't look elegant, but I mean that in the best way possible. Uh, I don't quite know how else to explain it. 
Uh, you do get some uh, drama going on when you're winding this watch, as you can see. It's not, it's not boring when you're <laughs> when you're winding it. There, you've got a lot to take a look at. Um, you got these fingers uh, holding jewels, and I, I'm really not too qualified to talk about all that is going on here. There's a balance bridge going on um, on that uh, a balance wheel. Very interesting movement to look at. I'm not sure I'd say this is the most beautiful movement, um, but it is very interesting. It's got some uh, some interesting anglage as well. Uh, some nice polishing going on on this. Uh, I wish I could take a better shot here, but on this component, there's some nice polishing. All very, very, very nicely done. Um, but yeah, there, there's definitely better, better finish movements out there. Not uh, a knock on this. This is supposed to be a sports watch. So uh, the, the movement finishing isn't high up on the list. I don't think, but it is a very, very capable stainless steel integrated bracelet sports watch. So this has a butterfly clasp dual deployment. I think it's called uh, officially, but a butterfly clasping system with micro adjust. Could you take a look at this? Oh, ingenious. So you got uh, auxiliary triggers next to the main trigger that uh, deploys the clasp you got these auxiliary triggers when you press you're able to pull out and give yourself some breathing room now um the implementation is is very cool but uh, it, when you do do this you're gonna see an unsightly gap <laughs> with your uh with your skin poking through there and it's definitely not the uh, yeah it's definitely not something you'd want to do on a regular basis uh, i think it's more of a uh, save my wrist kind of thing uh, if, if it's feeling really tight on a really humid part of the day you just pull one of these out give your wrist some room to breathe and then putting this back in is a little with one hand at least is a little tricky i was able to do it i don't think i'll be able to you know, on camera so anyway that's that's how that works here it is on my 16 centimeter wrist let me zoom out a little for context. There we go. Um, so 41 millimeters. Uh, there is actually a smaller version at 38. I'm, I'm quite interested, personal opinion here, of course, quite interested to see what that's uh, like on my wrist. But this one is very, very nice. I think um, I think they've done a really good job with the design. Uh, the, the large dial, I think, is, is w worthy of it. Um, this is all dial and uh, can be a bit overwhelming on some watches if it's just a vast amount of emptiness, right? Uh, at least I find that to be the case. Uh, there's some uh, Parmigiani Fleuriers that are um, all dial and there's not a lot going on on the dial itself and it's just a vast space of emptiness. But here you've got a lot going on on the dial and I think this deserves to be on a big dial. So even though it looks like a dinner plate on my wrist, <laughs> I, I think I think it deserves uh, the the fact that I, I don't deserve to wear it. <laughs> uh, but guys, I'm really in interested to see what you think of this. Uh, the Salmon Sushi Dialed Chopic Antarctic Passage de Drake. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm very, very thankful to Marcus that he let me spend a significant amount of time with his new watch. This is incredibly cool. I am, um, again, very thankful to you, Marcus. Thank you for, for sharing your collection with me. Um, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.